זה מי טוב? ‫בקורדינג את קונטנט, לא. ‫מי נאמי זה לא אפניתאי, ‫אני מתכוונת להיות עוד עם ה-work, ‫לרנד וסטארט שרולי אנה ביגיוס ‫פור ריאליסטי גרמרס, ‫זה היה ג'וינט וורק ‫עם דנה פיפמן ומיכל ריבי פיפמן. So the overview of the talk, I will first start with uh, the motivation and uh, the setting, what we are trying to do. Then I will go over uh, previous work, important previous work, and finally I will go over my uh, learning algorithm. So um, what we are trying to achieve here, the main motivation here, is interpretability of black box models. Uh, today, modern neural networks uh, such as recurrent neural networks and other architectures uh, have been shown to uh, approximate reasonably uh, many formal languages, uh, regular, context-free, and many other classes. However, uh, what, what they learn is unclear, meaning that uh, we can train a classifier to classify whether a word is in a regular language or not, Uh, we can train uh, a generator to generate words from some unknown language, but uh, this model doesn't give us some clear rules. What is the grammar? What is the language? How, how does it look? And what we, are, what we want to do is to interpret this uh, black box model and to understand what the rules of the grammar, if it's regular, context-free, and, and so on. So the class we are uh, interested in learning is the probabilistic context-free grammars. Uh, these are a, a very a important computational model and it is very important in uh, natural language processing and uh, bioinformatics and in many other uh, fields as well. Uh, and it is, it, it is suitable for modeling uh, systems which uh, observe non-regular behavior. So it is a, a stronger uh, model than regular languages. Uh, so it's uh, very uh, suitable for such a, a model. So I will now go over some um, uh, preliminaries about uh, context free grammars. I assume most of you are familiar with, with them, so I will go over those quite quickly. Um, but if something is not clear, then it's very handy. So uh, a context free grammar uh, is a four couple. We have a set of uh, non-terminal symbols, an alphabet, a set of terminal symbols, uh, a set of derivation rules R, and a special start symbol S. This is, for example, some context-free grammar. We have uh, a binary alphabet here, sigma. Uh, we have a single non-terminal symbol, and we have the following three derivation rules. And we can use this context-free grammar to derive uh, words uh, from it. So, Uh, we can also look on the derivation tree. So, for example, if we if we use the, this derivation rule S goes to AA, we obtain the following power screen. We can obtain this power screen as, as well using S goes to SB, and then if S goes to AA, and so on. So this is a context-free grammar. I assume most of you are familiar with it. And uh, we, we denote by this notation trees of G for some context-free grammar G, the set of all possible power trees that can be derived from this grammar. And usually it is in, in, an infinite set. In most interesting grammars, it is an infinite set. Um, so what is the probabilistic context-free grammar? It is a tuple. Uh, we have G, which is a regular, which is a context-free grammar. And we have a, a function theta, uh, which gives to each derivation rule some probability. And uh, we want that for each uh, non-terminal, the sum of all probabilities would be one. So for example, we can take the context-free grammar, I think it's the same one, but no, it's, it's another one. But we can take this context-free grammar and give it a prob probability. So uh, the idea is that each derivation would have a probability and that uh, for each non-terminal, the sum of all probabilities would be one. And uh, you, can, you, can, you can, I guess you, you understand how you can calculate the probability of, of, a, of a tree. We simply multiply, it's simply the product of all the probabilities of all the derivation used. So for example, here we used S goes to S N1, which has a probability of uh, 0.1. And then S goes to AA, which has a probability of 0.5. And then N1 goes to B. So the probability is the product of all these uh, derivation rules. So this is a, these are probabilistic context-free grammars. 
And another model, which is a bit more relaxed, uh, but uh, I will show to you because it's a bit easier to learn and it can sometimes be easily converted to probabilistic context-free grammar, is weighted context-free grammars. And here too, we have a, a, some theta function which assigns to each derivation rule some weight, but it doesn't have to be a probability. It can be any positive weight. Uh, and we don't, of course, we don't need that the, the, for if non terminal, the sum of weights will be one. Uh, for example, here, this is a regular grammar actually, which uh, has a, a weight of one for each derivation. And all the trees in this grammar have a weight of one because the calculation of, a, of the weight of a tree is, is again the product of all uh, derivations. So if you note here, if we, if we sum over all possible derivation trees, uh, since we have infinite derivation trees and each derivation tree has a weight of one, the, the sum of all derivation trees, of the weights of all derivation trees doesn't converge. But if we have a weighted context free grammar, which is convergent, meaning that the sum of all derivation trees is less than infinity, we can convert it to a probabilistic context free grammar simply by normalizing the weight. It's a bit more complicated than that, but not much complicated, more complicated than that. So uh, if we will be able to learn a weighted context free grammar, which is convergent, we can then later be able to uh, normalize it and, <coughs> and uh, convert it to a probabilistic context free grammar. Thus, the problem of learning a probabilistic context free grammar can be reduced to the problem of learning a, a convergent weighted context free grammar. So uh, now I will present to you the setting. Uh, the setting here is that we have a, a teacher, which is in our case, our black box model. So this can be, for example, I'll go and annotate here, annotate, annotate, annotate. And I annotate. Um, okay, so you'll have to do without my annotation. Uh, so this can be a, 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 some uh, black box model, this can be a neural network, and this is the learner, this is the, uh, our algorithm. And uh, we, we work in the setting in the minimal adequate teacher setting in which we assume that the learner can answer two types of queries, membership queries, which uh, given some word W, we want to know whether this word is in the target language or not. And the equivalence queries, uh, which after we have some hypothesis, uh, we can ask an equivalence query. We ask, the, we ask the teacher whether we are correct, whether we learned the target language uh, successfully. If we did, then uh, the teacher tells us, yes, you finished, congratulations. Otherwise, uh, it will provide us with counter example. This is a word that we didn't tag correctly, either it is in the language and we say it didn't, or uh, vice versa. And since in our setting, we are interested in probabilistic uh, languages, uh, the membership query, we will ask uh, what is the probability of some world, and we, 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 accept, we expect to receive the probability. And in the equivalence query, we give some uh, probabilistic model, and we will receive a counterexample if there is some world uh, that we didn't give it the correct probability. So uh, this is the basic uh, setting. And um, of course, there are previous works in this area. Uh, I will go over those. Uh, the, the algorithm that, uh, as far as I know, uh, introduced this learning setting is the L star algorithm by uh, Ben Andrew. Mm -hmm. And uh, this algorithm is used to extract a regular language, a DFA, a deterministic finite automata, from a, a black box model. So I will uh, go over how this algorithm works. Uh, I will go over later how some other algorithms which are based upon this one uh, work. And finally, I will go over our, my algorithm, which is based upon uh, L star uh, works as well, and how it relates to L star and what are the main differences. So, uh, the algorithm, uh, as I said, uh, assumes an oracle can answer two types of queries membership queries and equivalence query here. The, the algorithm the learner gives the teacher a DFA and, and it asks whether this DFA models correctly the target language. And uh, the algorithm learns by maintaining a data structure which is called the observation table. 
And what is this observation table? We can think on the, before speaking about the observation table, let's speak about the Henkel matrix. The Henkel matrix is an infinite matrix uh, whose rows uh, and columns uh, correspond to the prefixes and suffixes of sigma star. So here the alphabet is a binary alphabet and we have an infinite matrix with infinite rows, infinite columns. Each, uh, each row corresponds to a prefix, each column corresponds to a suffix. And to fill this matrix, uh, we need some language. Uh, this matrix has been calculated for a given language. And uh, for example, for the language A star, which includes only words that have only the letter A, uh, each entry in the matrix would be one if the concatenation of the prefix and the suffix is in the language and zero otherwise. So we can, the idea is this, this matrix can, can be filled. And uh, even though it's an infinite matrix, uh, one thing that we can observe is, is that for regular languages, there are only, uh, there is only a finite number of unique rows in this matrix. This is uh, according to the Mayhilner World Theorem, which says that uh, a regular language has a finite number of equivalence classes. Uh, here, each uh, row corresponds to uh, an equivalence class. And since there, are, there is a, a finite number of equivalence classes, there is a finite number of unique rows. So what the, uh, the L-star algorithm basically tries to do is it tries to uh, find some subset of rows and columns, which covers all the unique rows uh, in the matrix. Uh, okay, so for example, uh, this can be such an observation table. The observation table is a subset of the infinite Ankel matrix, and the algorithm aims to find a, a, an observation table which covers all the unique uh, rows. Uh, so the algorithm maintains a set of uh, prefixes and a set of suffixes, uh, and it calculates the Ankel matrix restricted to the suffixes and the prefixes and the one letter extensions of these prefixes. So for example, here we have uh, epsilon a and b and the one letter extensions of those. Uh, then uh, the algorithm, uh, we, we can also use, we use this notation T of s to, uh, to refer to the respected row in the, in the matrix. For example, for T, T of a is one, one, zero. Uh, so this is a simple notation we use. Uh, the algorithm then uh, tries to make the table both closed and consistent. This, these are two properties that the table need to uh, maintain. Uh, for a table to be closed, we need that all the one letter extensions won't introduce us new rows. For example, this table is closed because uh, all the one letter extensions which are marked with blue here, uh, the rows are already in the, in, in the rows of X. Uh, you can see T of epsilon, T of AA is covered by these two rows and these three rows are covered by T of B. If I could have written, it would have helped me, but I can't use notation for some reason. Uh, okay, the table is consistent. If, if we have two uh, different rows in S, for example, here epsilon and A, uh, which have the same, uh, the same, uh, which are which are equal, then all the one-letter extensions should uh, act the same on them. So, for example, epsilon and a are uh, similar, and we need that the one-letter extensions of those would also be equal. So, the one-letter extension of epsilon with b is b, and this row is zero zero zero, and the one-letter extension of a with b is a b, and this is also zero zero zero. So, this is okay. Uh, it also depends when we extend it with with a. It should happen for it should occur for every for every letter in the alphabet. And once the table is closed and consistent, uh, the algorithm can extract the DFA from it. Uh, the DFA is defined uh, as follows: uh, the set of state is the set of unique rows. Uh, the row of epsilon is the initial state, and the accepting states are all the rows whose leftmost column has one. And the delta is simply defined when we, uh, delta of, of some row in the letter is the row of the extension. It will be more simple like that. So uh, these are the two unique rows and you can see that this is the uh, DFA that we extract. So when we read the letter B, for example, from here, we go to the row zero, zero, zero as 
uh, as we see like in the table. So this is the L star algorithm. And uh, the idea basically here, I didn't cover it uh, entirely, but the idea here is that the algorithm uh, maintains this observation table. It tries to make it a, a close and consistent by asking membership queries and filling uh, the table and adding uh, uh, prefixes and suffixes as needed. Once the table is close and consistent, it extracts a DSA and asks an equivalence query. Uh, if the answer is positive, then it terminates. Otherwise, it takes the counter example, adds it to the table, and uh, proceeds. So this is the L-star algorithm. And what I wanted to take from this algorithm is that, uh, that there is a finite number of equivalence classes in the infinite until matrix that we want to cover with our finite observation table. And uh, the conditions for the closeness and consistency, which will have similar conditions in our algorithm. So we know now how to go from a black box model to a, a regular language. And uh, our problem is still that we need to go from black box model to a probabilistic context, for example. So two main challenges that uh, we need to uh, solve are first, uh, the transition from a regular language setting to a context-free grammar setting. And the second is the transition from the binary setting uh, to the probabilistic setting. So this challenge, uh, going from a regular to a context-free grammar, uh, was already solved. Uh, I will go over the, the solution. Uh, the main challenge and the, our main contribution is the, how, how, how do we solve this challenge? How, do, how can we train how can we learn a probabilistic uh, grammar from a black box model? So, uh, how does the first problem, uh, how, how was the first problem solved? Uh, by uh, using a tree automata as an intermediate between the context free grammar. So, there is an algorithm based on L star which learns tree automata. And there is also a result that shows that tree automata can be converted to context free grammar. So, the algorithm first learn a tree automata in an L star uh, style, then convert it to a context free grammar. So uh, I will briefly go over tree automata. Uh, tree automata also like DFAs have a set of states. They have an alphabet, uh, they have a set of accepting states. The transition function is uh, defined a bit more complicated than in, uh, in DFAs. Note that it receives a K tuple of states and a letter of the alphabet and returns a state. So it would be more simple with an example. So for example, we can have this, uh, this uh, three automata and these two three. Note that for uh, A and B, which are in the leaves, the function doesn't receive any, any state. It receives a, a zero tuple of states and the letter of the alphabet. Uh, this, this corresponds in some way to the initial state. So this is a bottom up tree automaton, and we start reading the tree bottom up. We start from the leaves, and we need an initial state when we start from the leaves. So uh, this function gives us the initial state when we read B, and this is the initial state when we read A. So for example, the calculation of these three, we start from the leaves, uh, we calculate Q1 and Q1 for both of these leaves. Then we use the uh, transition function. So when we read the letter C and the uh, previous states are Q1 and Q1 for both of the leaves, we go to the state Q1. So we remain in Q1 here. Here we also go to Q1 given this transition. And uh, we use again this transition Q1, Q1, and C remain in Q1. This is the final state. The state of the root is the final state. And uh, similarly, we can calculate, we can perform the same calculation on this tree. Uh, here we go, we start with Q0. Then when we read uh, the letter C and the previous states are Q0 and Q1, we remain in Q0. And again, here Q1 and Q0 remain in Q0. Since the accepting state is Q0, the, this tree is accepted, while this tree is not accepted. And the language of this uh, tree automata, bottom up tree automata, is simply all the trees uh, which contain a letter, which contain a leaf, which is tagged by the, by the symbol A. So this is this uh, tree automata. And uh, what is the relation between tree automata and context-free grammars? So uh, given a context-free grammar and given some power trees, 
we can look on the unlabeled derivation tree of the of the grammar. Okay, so for example, this this grammar and these three derivation trees, the unlabeled derivation trees are the same trees, but in which all the internal nodes are marked with a special uh, symbol. Uh, so the internal nodes are unknown, but we know the, the structure of of the tree. So uh, given some given a tree automaton which can accept exactly the parse trees of some uh, context-free grammar, we can convert this tree automata to, uh, the, to, the, to the corresponding context-free grammar. So uh, using this fact, we can learn the tree automata that accepts all the parse trees, all the unlabeled parse trees of the grammar, and then later convert it to, to, to the context-free grammar. So uh, the idea, by the way, of how, how the transition works, I, I won't get too much deep into it, but uh, you, can, you can see that given, given the, the tree automata in the tree, uh, the tree automata uh, gives us some calculation for this tree. For example, here uh, we go to the state uh, Q2, and here also to Q2, and, this, and here to Q3, and the, this is the labeling, this is basically the labeling of the, of the, of the tree. So, we will have a derivation rule, n q3 goes to n q2, n q2, and n q2 goes to ab. So this is basically the, the idea. It's not that complicated, but it's not uh, really the goal of this, uh, of this talk. The idea is that the transition is fairly simple once we have the, this, uh, this tree automata. So now, uh, given that we can uh, convert a tree automata to context-free grammars, uh, we need to see how we can learn tree automata, and there is a variation of L star for trees. Uh, so this is some comparison between these two algorithms. L star learns regular languages, L star for trees learn regular tree languages, uh, but uh, it can be used to learn context tree grammar from structural data. Uh, the Oracle here answer membership queries and equivalent queries on words. Here, the Oracle needs to be able to answer structured membership queries and structured equivalent queries, meaning given a tree, given a structured string or an unlabeled derivation tree, we need to be able to answer whether it belongs to the grammar or not. And the observation table in the L star, we saw that the rows correspond to the prefixes and the columns correspond to the suffixes. In L star for trees, the rows uh, correspond to trees and the columns uh, correspond to contexts, which I will shortly explain what are contexts, but basically there are some, some generalization of suffixes uh, for trees. So uh, this was, for example, an observation table in L star, and uh, in L star for trees, uh, the, the rows would be trees, but the, the columns uh, are a bit more difficult to see how, how they will look. Uh, so this will be contexts. What is a context? <clears throat> a context is a spatial tree, which uh, in which uh, a spatial symbol, which we use this diamond uh, for, occurs exactly once in it in a leaf. So this, for example, is a context because the diamond occurs in it exactly once and it uh, occurs in a leaf. So given a context, this one, and uh, some tree, which is our prefix, we can concatenate uh, both of them, and how do we concatenate them? We simply replace the appearance of the diamond in the context with the prefix. So this is the concatenation of this context C and this 3T, which we use with the note by this, uh, this notation, and this is how the tree looks. So this is how our observation table would look. We would have prefixes, suffixes, contexts, and we would fill the table we will make it closed and consistent, ask membership and equivalence queries, and uh, once the table is closed and consistent, we would extract a uh, tree automata and so on. And so in that aspect, it's not that different from ESA. Okay, so now we move to the main challenge, which is how do we, how, how can we learn probabilistic uh, functions? How can, and how can we learn a probabilistic context for Ghana? And uh, for that, we need a different model. And this model, uh, the model that, we, that we've chosen in, is the multiplicity uh, automata. Multiplicity automaton or plural multiplicity automata. So um, for that, we need to first define word series. Word series uh, or word functions 
are simply functions from sigma star to some uh, algebraic field. Uh, so for example, if we take this field as the uh, real numbers, we can have uh, L of W to be the length of the world, uh, or a half to the power of the length of the world, or simply a constant function which uh, always returns one. All these are simply functions over some an algebraic field. And uh, the, the, the model which, uh, which can accept these functions is the multiplicity uh, automata. So I will compare it to a DFA. Uh, it's not that different from a DFA, but uh, it is some extension of it. So uh, the DFA defines the language, uh, some subset of sigma star, and the multiplicity automaton defines function from sigma star. Here I, here I mentioned the real numbers, but as I said, it can be any algebraic field. So uh, as I said, it, it's defined, it defines a function. And uh, the DFA has a set of states, a finite set of states. The multiplicity automaton has a vector space, which uh, in some way is the set of states. It is an infinite set of space, but the, but the model itself is still a, a finite model. Um, okay, it has an initial state, like the DFA has an initial state, the multiplicity automaton has an initial vector. Uh, the DFA has, has a set of accepting states. And the multiplicity automaton has the spatial vector uh, lambda, which is in some way the, the, uh, the set of accepting states in it. And uh, finally, uh, we have state transitions uh, in the DFA, given a state and a symbol, we move to a different state. In the multiplicity automaton, we have a, a, a set of linear transformation, one linear transformation for every uh, symbol in the alphabet. So how do we transit from one vector to another? When we read, for example, the letter A, we multiply our current vector by this linear transformation to obtain the next vector. And so let's look at, for example, the conversion of the DFA and the multiplicity automaton on some given world. I really wanted to be able to annotate this too. Maybe, uh, this was the last attempt. Uh, okay, so the DFA starts with uh, the initial state, the multiplicity automaton starts with the initial vector, and each of them start, starts within the world. Uh, the DFA reads the symbol uh, sigma one. It uses the transition fu function delta of Q0 and sigma one to go to Q1. And the multiplicity automaton uses the linear transformation of sigma one to calculate the next vector v1. So it multiplies gamma by mu of sigma one, the linear transformation of sigma one to obtain the next vector and simply goes over the entire world. Now it uses the linear transformation of sigma two until it reaches sigma n. This is the final vector. And uh, the world uh, w is in the language of the DFA if qn is accepting. And the, the value knows that it calculates the vector and the multiplicity automaton actually calculates a scalar value. So it multiplies the final vector by the accepting state vector uh, lambda uh, using a dot product to obtain the, the actual value of the function. So uh, let's look on a simple uh, example. This is simply the formal definition, I will skip it. Uh, let's look on a simple example. Uh, this is some multiplicity automaton. It has an initial vector gamma. It has a set of linear transformation for each letter in the alphabet, mu a and mu b, and it has an output vector uh, lambda. So uh, it starts the calculation with the initial vector uh, gamma. Then uh, it reads the letter a, so it uses the linear transformation of mu a. It multiplies uh, the previous vector by this linear transformation to obtain the next vector. Now it reads the letter B. Uh, the matrix for B is the identity matrix, so the state doesn't change. Basically, when we read B, we stay in the same state. Now it reads A again, uses this matrix again, the vector changes. And finally, after it finished reading the world, it uses the vector uh, lambda, and we obtain the final value of the of the world. Basically, the the this, the, the multi this multiplicity automaton 
calculates the number of A's in the world. You can see here that uh, mu B is the identity matrix, so reading a B doesn't uh, affect that. Can you still hear me, by the way? Because, okay, you can still hear me. I, I thought that my internet fell down. Uh, okay, so uh, the final value is the number of occurrence sets of A in the, in the world. So uh, like we have three uh, world series, we have three series. Um, okay, so uh, this is a, basically a function from the set of all trees over some alphabet to some uh, algebraic field. Uh, so this function can be, for example, the height of a tree or the number of leaves in the tree. And the model that calculates this uh, function is the multiplicity tree automaton. Uh, so as we said before, uh, we have this correspondence between the states and the vector space, the transition functions and, and mu, uh, the initial state and the initial vector, and we want uh, to have the same with the multiplicity tree automaton. So uh, the multiplicity automaton has a set of states, an alphabet, a, a set of accepting states and uh, transition functions. Uh, the multiplicity tree automaton would have a vector space, which would again be our a set, of, a set of states, the alphabet, uh, uh, the vector lambda for the accepting states, and the set mu for the transitions. Here, uh, the transitions are multilinear. I don't have much time to go into this, so I won't. Uh, but basically, the idea is uh, we'll see the example here. Note that, for example, the, uh, when we read the letter B here, we, we accept two vectors. Like in the tree automata, we accept, we, we receive two states. Here we receive two vectors, and we somehow need to calculate the next one. So uh, there is, a, there is a, this multilinear function which can receive a, a K vectors and return a, a, a one vector. So basically, we can represent these multilinear functions using this uh, matrix form, uh, and I won't uh, get much into it. How, how, can, how, can you, how, how the calculation is being done, because it's not that important for the talk. I want to uh, still make it to our contribution. So this, for example, is some calculation on the tree. We go again bottom up, calculate the uh, vector, the state for each node, given the, the children of this node, and when we reach the root, we, multi we use dot product with the vector lambda to obtain the uh, value of this. Tree. This multiplicity tree automaton, by the way, calculates the number of leaves uh, in this tree. Uh, here it's actually really three. So let's return to our goal. Uh, we saw earlier that you can use a, a black box, you can extract from black box model a context free grammar by uh, using a tree automata, and we would uh, do the same thing. Uh, we would go from a black box model to a multiplicity tree automaton, and uh, from this multiplicity tree automaton, uh, we want to extract a weighted context-free grammar, a convergent weighted context-free grammar, which, as we uh, saw earlier, I can convert to a probabilistic context-free grammar. So, um, the first transition, the transition from the uh, multiplicity tree automaton to a weighted context free grammar, uh, which is, should be like the transition that we showed earlier from a tree automata to a context free grammar. This is some extension that we developed for this transition. So, like you can uh, go from a tree automaton to a context free grammar, we extended this uh, to be able to go from a multiplicity tree automaton to a weighted context free grammar. This isn't our main contribution, so I won't uh, get much into it, but the important thing about it, that uh, given a, a multiplicity tree automaton, the grammar uh, uh, retains the weights of the tree automaton. So for example, uh, if the tree automaton had the weights of uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 here, this will remain in, in, the, in the context free grammar. So because we said earlier that if we want the weighted context free grammar to be convergent, one necessary condition is that it would be positive. All the weights must be positive. The main problem here and the main issue here is that we want to learn multiplicity tree automata, but we want that all the weights in, in those multiplicity tree automata would be non-negative. Because if we would have a negative weight in the tree automata that we learn, when we will convert it to a weighted context free grammar, we would have a negative weight here. 
And once we have negative weight here, we can't convert it to a probabilistic context free grammar. So if we want to learn probabilistic context free grammar, we must be able to uh, learn a positive multiplicity true automata, which are true automata in which all the weights are positive. And this is actually a, a big problem uh, because learning multiplicity automata is relatively easy, but uh, enforcing some constraints on this multiplicity automata, such as we want that the weight would be strictly non-negative or some other constraints is uh, relatively, relatively, it's quite hard. So this is our main challenge. So uh, we saw that we can go from positive multiplicity free automata to weighted context free grammar. We, I said to you that you can go from weighted context free grammar to probabilistic context free grammar, and this is our main uh, problem. So uh, how do we learn a multiplicity automata? Uh, for example, uh, let, let's go back to words because they are much more simple than trees and every time that I can, I, I'd rather work with words. I assume uh, you also understand words better than trees. So for example, the word series that assigns to each uh, word, uh, to each word, the number of A's in it. This is the word series that we saw earlier. Don't have much time left, I think. Uh, how much time do I have left? Uh, Oh, you have about six minutes. Okay. Okay, great. So um, you can see here, uh, this is the Hankel matrix, the infinite Hankel matrix that assigns each entry in the matrix is the value of the function. And unlike uh, what we had earlier with L star, that we had two unique rows, here it's not that simple. Uh, it seems like there is an infinite number of unique rows in it, and it's true, but there is still some regularity in the Hankel matrix. And, the regularity here is that the first two rows, V1 and V2, we can call them linearly span uh, the entire matrix. So for example, this row is a unique row. It's a new row that we never seen before, but we can, uh, we can uh, represent it as a linear combination of the first two rows. And, and actually all the infinite rows in the matrix can be represented uh, using a linear combination of the, of the base. So this is uh, the idea that uh, the, the algorithms for learning true automata use. They try, to, they try like L star to find a subset of the Hankel matrix, which contain all the, uh, all the rows that linearly span the entire matrix. Uh, like L star try to find a set of rows that are the unique rows. Here we don't have unique rows, but we have a base that spans the matrix. So this is what we try to find. So as I said, uh, I didn't say, but I say now, this cannot be done. You, you cannot go from a black box model directly to a positive multiplicity tree automata. You cannot enforce that the tree automata that you will extract will have uh, only non-negative uh, weights, at least not in L star uh, style algorithms. And we actually show, uh, show why, I, I will skip a bit because I don't have much time. Uh, the idea here, is that the, this is the, the observation table. And this is the base, the first two rows of the base. And you can see that the, the other three rows are linearly spanned by uh, the first two rows, but they are spanned with negative coefficients. Once we have negative coefficients, we would have negative coefficients in the tree automata. This is basically our problem. Uh, so we want to somehow be able to extract a tree automata without negative weights. We show that this cannot be done. Uh, in, for, for it for every context with grammar. Uh, so skipping a bit, uh, we give this uh, probabilistic context free grammar as an example. It's a really simple context free grammar. It's actually a regular uh, grammar. Uh, but this context free grammar cannot be extracted from, uh, from, uh, from the Ankel matrix. Why it cannot be extracted? Because if we would look on the Ankel matrix for this uh, grammar, we have uh, the, the first uh, two, the, the first three rows linearly span the entire matrix, but with negative coefficients. You see here the negative one over 24. And actually we can show that there isn't any base that spans this matrix with positive coefficients. Meaning that no matter what uh, modification we would introduce to how we choose the base, we can force the algorithm to choose only uh, vectors that span the, 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 the other vectors with positive coefficients, no matter what we would try to do, always we would have some uh, 
we, we won't cover the entire matrix because there isn't a, a, a base that's linearly, uh, that positively spans the entire uh, Hanke matrix. So we can't extract a positive multiplicity true automatons from this Hanke matrix, which is the Hanke matrix of a relatively simple uh, grammar. So what we do, I mean, in the last four minutes, I will introduce it. Uh, so this is, again, this is our result. We, we've shown that you cannot extract a, a positive multiplicity pure automaton from the Hanke matrix. And this grammar uh, is the proof of that. So uh, we introduce uh, structurally unambiguous uh, grammars. This is a special class of uh, probabilistic, uh, of, of context-free grammars. And the idea uh, of, of these uh, grammars is, is that no true uh, distinct uh, derivation to it can have the same structure. So for example, this thing, in which we have two different derivations to it with different labeling, but when we look on the unlabeled derivation to it, they share the same structure. This cannot occur in a structurally unambiguous context-free grammar. And uh, we also introduce a special class of multiplicity tree automata, which we term collinear multiplicity tree automata. And the idea of those is that each row uh, must have at least one, uh, excuse me, was, must have at most one non-zero entry. So this is not a collinear multiplicity tree automata because we have two uh, non-zero entries, but this is a valid uh, collinear multiplicity tree automata. And we show uh, the relation that a structurally unambiguous uh, weighted uh, context free grammar has a collinear multiplicity tree automata for its three series. So uh, if we can learn those, we can learn structurally unambiguous context free grammars. And we show that we can learn, learn those. We introduce a learning algorithm for those. And the idea basically here is that for collinear multiplicity tree automata, we can uh, divide the Hankel matrix, the infinite Hankel matrix, to a finite number of unique equivalence classes. And these equivalence classes are uh, one equivalence class for uh, the rows which are zero, and uh, two, two rows are in the same equivalence classes if one row is a multiplication by a scalar of the other one. So here, for example, you can see that the second row and the fifth row are different, but uh, actually the second row is four times the fifth row. So they are in the same equivalence class, and we prove that for the for a collinear multiplicity tree automata, the Hanke matrix has a finite number of equivalence classes. Uh, then we, we can show a, an angular install a learning algorithm. Uh, we simply try to find a, a subset of the matrix which, which covers all the equivalence classes. Then we extract the collinear multiplicity tree automaton from it. Uh, here there are some definitions about how we define the closeness of the table. It's, relatively similar to how uh, angular interfines uh, table is closed and again the consistency and I will skip those because they are not that important and go to the analysis of the runtime. Uh, so uh, the runtime uh, is as follows, we can make a linear number, we, we prove that we make at most a linear number of equivalent squares where n is the is number of non-terminal symbols in the target context free grammar. Note uh, the P here uh, looks like an expo exponential uh, runtime, but uh, P is the, is the highest rank of, of the tree. Uh, but if we restrict ourselves to grammar in Chomsky normal form, we obtain a strictly polynomial time also on the membership uh, query. Uh, well, N is the size of the uh, number of non-terminal symbols in the target language. M is the large size of the loudest counter example, and sigma is the size of the alphabet. So to summarize uh, our talk, uh, we showed that this, uh, that you can't extract a general positive multiplicity tree automata from a black box model, but we've introduced a special case of positive multiplicity tree automata, uh, which we term collinear multiplicity tree automata. We showed that you can learn those in polynomial time, and we show that uh, th those, are, those correspond to a special class of context string grammars, actually unambiguous and you can convert uh, this multiplicity automata to those models. So we can learn a uh, structurally unambiguous probabilistic context free grammar from a uh, black box model. I think I rushed the end, but I didn't have much choice because uh, my time management was not that good, but I apologize. Uh, so uh, 
I think we finished exactly on time. So if you have any questions uh, now, I will answer those. And thank you again for uh, the stage. Thank you, Dulao. So yeah, questions? Yeah, go ahead, Julian. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, so thanks for this nice talk. Uh, found it very interesting. I had a question basically on, uh, I guess, on related work. Um, so you say this this thing about uh, learning learning with the with the positive coefficients. Uh, this result, I couldn't exactly follow what was going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, so, but, okay. but but last year, so so we have a paper of which uh, several of the authors are uh, are present here, <laughs> where we show that weighted automata over the natural numbers cannot be learned uh, in an L star style, um, whereas over the integers they can. Over the natural numbers, they cannot be learned. Yeah, so which if, is you, if you're over the integers, then 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 it's fine, which is which is somehow non-trivial. Uh, because it's not a field, but over the natural numbers, it doesn't work. And, and I think what you were showing look, looked very similar. Uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, yeah, I think in my case, it's, you can learn those over the positive real numbers. Uh, you can't over the positive real numbers, but you can over the real numbers. So I think, yeah, it was, I didn't uh, know about your uh, paper, but I will look into it. It's interesting. Right, okay, so this is uh, uh, FOSAX 2000. 20, I believe, so it's also very recent. Yeah, this paper also published on 20, so interesting, I will look into it. Okay, thank you, Julian. Nat, go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks for the talk. I have a, a super naive question. What do you do with the converging question? So how do you ensure that your weighted contextual grammar is actually converging? Yeah, this is an actually a great question. So I, I actually skipped this. I, I told you to assume the problem, but it's, it, it is actually quite simple. Uh, the target language is a probabilistic context grammar. So the sum of all uh, derivation trees would be one because the target language is a probabilistic context grammar. The problem is that uh, the, uh, while, while the grammar, the sum of all derivation trees would be one, we can have uh, the other uh, constraints, uh, we can have this grammar won't uh, uh, satisfy the other constraints. For example, that for each one terminal, the sum of all uh, derivations uh, would be one. So this constraint won't necessarily be satisfied. And this is why uh, we have to normalize the grammar and to turn it from a weighted context free grammar to a probabilistic context free grammar. But given that the algorithm is correct and it learns the actual uh, target language and the target language, the sum of all derivations with is one because it is a probabilistic language, then we can uh, assume correctly that this weighted context free grammar is convergent and it converges to one actually. Is it answer? Yeah, questions? thanks. Um, I have a second question actually. Can, mm -hmm. can ah, I? Go ahead. Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, so I did not understand one thing because in your learning algorithm, you are observing worlds, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to this unstructured, uh, to this structured trees with a question mark. So how do you, I mean, when do you make this uh, um, decomposition of the world into trees? Yeah, so this is another good question, and uh, I don't have an answer for it. In our learning setting, we assume we are given a teacher which can answer this membership query over structural trees. Uh, so we don't uh, create those. I see. But, uh, yeah. oh, thanks. Interesting problem. If I can add in something, then the reason is that uh, there are um, hardness results for learning with non-structural membership queries. So. Um, Given that this is the case, we turned into something. Um, um, we turned to using structural membership queries. And this, does this already apply for strongly unambiguous PCFGs? Because in some sense, this is a class for which, uh, mm, well, you need only the structure of the tree, but you don't need the information inside the tree. So it's, I don't know. But you, but but given a word, this is the, uh, I will. Uh, I want to make something clear, which I think I didn't make during this talk. We don't learn uh, unambiguous uh, contextual grammars. Uh, we learn a more relaxed 
a class of structurally unambiguous context-free grammars. If I could have uh, used annotations on the board, I, I, I would give, I would have drawn an example, but uh, two trees, uh, two, two words can have different part trees in, in our setting, in a structurally unambiguous uh, context-free grammar, two words can have different part trees, but the problem is when, when two part trees share exactly the same structure. Uh, this is this is our problem. So it's not true that given a word, we know uh, the path tree. Given a word, we don't know the path tree. It can have many different path trees, but the idea is that each path tree is, uh, has a different structure. Yeah, right. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have more questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Dula for, uh, for a very interesting talk. Can we all clap? Can you please unmute and clap? Thank you. Great having a talk. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Dula. So, um, so, of course, if any one of you want to interact with Dula, I think he'll be around for some more time um, for the post talk coffee break. I'm stopping the recording now, anyway. <laughs>